Semiconductors have skyrocketed in importance over the past few years. These tiny chips are not just components in our gadgets. They're at the heart of intense global competition, even fueling tech conflicts between nations. And if you thought the China-US trade war was just about tariffs, think again. It's also about semiconductors. But here's the twist. One country playing a surprisingly huge role in the semiconductor game is the Philippines. Yes, the Philippines. Although many don't know it, including a lot of Filipinos themselves. It's a country still seen as developing, but that narrative is stuck in the past. The Philippines is crucial to the global semiconductor supply chain, particularly in assembly, testing, and packaging, known as ATP. Now, ATP may not sound as glamorous as chip design or fabrication, which happens in tech giants like Taiwan or South Korea, but it's a key step that no one can skip. Once semiconductors are designed and built, they need to go through ATP to become fully functional, tested, and ready for the real world. That's where the Philippines shines. Its export processing zones, like those in Laguna, Cavite, and Batangas, are hubs for this critical work. And the big names in the semiconductor world, companies like Texas Instruments, Amcor Technology, and OnSemi, have set up major ATP operations here. Why? Because of the country's affordable labor and growing expertise in the field. Take Texas Instruments, for example. Their Baguio facility is one of their biggest outside the United States, handling a major chunk of the company's ATP work worldwide. It's a testament to how integrated the Philippines has become in the global semiconductor ecosystem, quietly making itself indispensable in this tech-powered age. So, how did it all start? How did the... They specialized in assembling and testing semiconductors used in everything from cars to consumer electronics. Thanks to the scale and skill of the Baguio site, TI made the Philippines a cornerstone of its global operations. This set the stage for the country's reputation as a trusted partner for semiconductor assembly, testing, and packaging ATP services. And TI wasn't alone in shaping this future. Intel was another heavyweight in the early days. They opened a major facility in Cavite in 1974, drawn to the same advantages. Affordable labor, strategic location, and an English-speaking workforce. Intel's Cavite plant became a key piece of the puzzle for their global operations, producing a large portion of their microprocessors and other crucial semiconductor components. Intel's footprint in the Philippines only strengthened the country's status as a reliable partner for Ham-I-Volume semiconductor manufacturing. 
Intel wasn't just about business, they were also about transformation. By investing heavily in infrastructure and workforce training, Intel played a major role in modernizing the Philippines' manufacturing capabilities. The impact was felt far and wide, with thousands of jobs created and the local economy thriving. But as the tides of global manufacturing shifted in the mid-2000s, Intel eventually made the tough decision to close its Philippine facility in 2009 as part of a global restructuring effort. Although this closure felt like a setback, Intel left behind more than just buildings. They left a legacy. The skills and expertise passed on to the local workforce didn't just fade away. Many former Intel employees moved on to other semiconductor companies across the Philippines, sharing the valuable knowledge they gained during their time with Intel. By the 1980s, thanks to companies like Intel and Texas Instruments, the Philippines had firmly established itself as a growing player in the semiconductor game. As the global demand for electronics and specialized manufacturing skyrocketed, the Philippines seized the moment, positioning itself as a dependable hub for semiconductor assembly and testing. This opened the door to a new wave of foreign investors, like Amcor Technology and ON Semiconductor. Fairchild Semiconductor had already paved the way, setting up facilities lured by the country's low labor costs, tax incentives, and close proximity to Asia's emerging markets. Amcor Technology, a leader in semiconductor assembly, testing, and packaging ATP services, made its move in the 1980s. They set up shop in Muntinlupa City and soon expanded to other regions. Amcor didn't just settle in, they introduced cutting-edge ATP innovations, such as advanced packaging techniques like Bulgrid Array, BGA packaging, which became essential for making smaller, more powerful chips. Meanwhile, On Semiconductor, now known as On Semi, expanded its presence by acquiring Motorola's semiconductor business in 1999. This acquisition included the assembly and testing facility in Carmona, Cavite, marking another milestone in the Philippines' semiconductor journey. Over the years, Onsemi has poured resources into upgrading its Philippine facility, turning it into a vital link in the company's global supply chain. The focus? Products designed for automotive, industrial, and power management applications. While foreign investors dominated the semiconductor scene in the Philippines during the 1980s, local players were also making their mark. A prime example is Integrated Microelectronics, Inkeng IMI, a subsidiary of Ayala Corporation. IMI was founded in 1980 and has since grown into a major player in electronics manufacturing and semiconductor assembly. They specialize in automotive electronics, industrial electronics, and power semiconductor devices, and have expanded their operations worldwide with facilities across several countries. As a homegrown company, IMI has been pivotal in developing local expertise in semiconductor assembly. By delivering high-value services to multinational clients, IMI has proved that Filipino talent can meet global standards, earning them a solid reputation as a trusted partner for semiconductor firms seeking top-notch manufacturing services. During this era, the semiconductor sector wasn't just growing, it was reshaping the Philippine economy. Electronics and semiconductors became essential export products, driving up foreign exchange earnings and creating thousands of jobs. The work the Philippines specialized in, assembly and testing, required technical know-how, which made the country an attractive location for these labor-intensive operations. The establishment of more export processing zones, EPZs, in areas like Laguna, Cavite, and Cebu only reinforced the Philippines' growing reputation as a key hub for the semiconductor industry. By the 1990s, the semiconductor industry in the Philippines was facing a new wave of challenges and opportunities. The global market was getting more competitive, with countries like China, Malaysia, and Thailand ramping up their investments in electronics manufacturing. This regional competition pushed the Philippines to step up its game, focusing on improving infrastructure, enhancing workforce skills, and making it easier to do business to keep foreign investors interested. In response, the Philippine government established the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, PESA, in 1995. 
Pisa simplified the process for export-oriented companies and created a more attractive environment for investment. This move helped retain major semiconductor players while attracting new ones like Maxim Integrated and analog devices. However, despite these efforts, the Philippines remained primarily focused on the assembly, testing, and packaging, a TP side of semiconductor production. The more advanced stages, like chip design and wafer fabrication, were still dominated by countries with stronger research and development ecosystems, such as Taiwan and South Korea. Still, the Philippines held its ground as a key player in the ATP sector, and today, the semiconductor industry is a giant in the country's economy. In fact, according to the semiconductor and electronics industries in the Philippines Foundation Incoming CIP, electronics and semiconductors made up around 62% of the country's total exports in 2022. The semiconductor segment alone brings in billions of dollars in export revenue each year. The industry also directly employs about 3.2 million people, from engineers and technicians to production line workers. Even the United States, a long-standing partner in the Philippines' semiconductor development, recognizes the country's critical role in the global semiconductor supply chain. So, what are your thoughts on this massive industry and the Philippines' place in it? Thanks for watching, and let us know in the comments.